Okay, so we'll get started. We'll begin with the discussion of questions with from quiz eleven. This uh, question is basically uh, the, almost the same as a question we had in quiz ten. Earlier we were concerned with the value of j. In this question we are concerned with the value of i. And more or less the calls to i and j are independent. So what we realize is, as far as i is concerned, it's only generate i that uh, takes as input the value of i, and in fact, i is passed by. Is it passed by reference or value to generate? Passed by value. It's called by value. And as a result. The i sitting inside generate is independent of the i that you invoke, um, that you pass while invoking generate. So, any amount of change that generate makes to i, for example, the uh, i equals b plus i return, none of this have anything to do with the value that gets updated here. So, here all you have for i equals zero to five, you are updating. You have zero, one, two, three, four. For values zero to four, call by value. You call generate, but generate doesn't change the value of i, and uh, therefore when you exit, you get the value five. Okay. So the answer is five. The next question, we had a different definition of generate. So generate would check that the n is non-zero, and uh, if non-zero, it would uh, add to n the value of generate n minus one. And working backwards, generate six is six plus generate five, which is uh, five plus generate four, and so on. So it's basically a nothing but a sum of zero until six. In general, all we are doing here in generate. So generate n should return the value of i sum from zero to n, which is n into n plus one by two. And just summing these up for the specific case for the value of n equals six, you get twenty one. It is pretty much like factorial. So you have addition instead of multiplication. And then uh, this question: What you are doing is keeping track of two arrays, a zero in uh, b zero being initialized to one each, and a i was set to b i minus one, and b i was set to a i minus one plus b i minus one. Now the only assignment to a i is through b i minus one. So one could substitute for a i minus one as B of i minus two, a i minus one should have been B of i minus two, and uh, B i equals B i minus one uh, two plus B i minus one just reminds you of the Fibonacci or Hamachandra series, and the fact that B i minus one gets assigned to a i means that a also eventually is looking going to look like the Fibonacci series, just that. Um, the array A will contain at A zero the zeroth element of Fibonacci series. So A will actually contain the Fibonacci series with the proper uh, index. Okay, so you can verify that A zero will contain the first fifty. Uh, uh, sorry, one to forty nine. So zero to fifty will contain the first fifty numbers. So one, one, two, three, five, eight. So A will actually contain the Fibonacci series. B will have an offset. This so Fibonacci series with a small offset. Okay. Any questions? So we'll continue with the arrays, and um, for mid sums we'll have chapter thirteen, and until until chapter uh, fourteen, section uh, two.
okay so recap our discussion on arrays when you had to store multiple pressure values at different points um or roll numbers or marks you could just define a data type followed by the name of the array followed by in square brackets the size of the array and array name i gives the ith variable index is i okay and we also illustrate how to find the size of different types including array types using the function called size of that can, but the size of gives you the length of the array multiplied by the size that is allocated to the primitive for double it is 8 bytes for int it will be 4 bytes and so on i'm sorry was int was 8 and double was 16 okay so uh, we also showed how uh, you could read in multiple marks and let's say the roll numbers were from 1 to 100 the students could arrive in any order and you want to retrieve the marks associated with the student with the assumption that the query is in the form of a roll number between 1 and 100 and legal number for example a minus 1 would mean that the program must terminate and here was our program so we read in all the marks and the assumption is the ith mark corresponds to the ith roll number and uh, because the arrays array stores uh, values with indices ranging from 0 to the size minus length minus 1 the roll numbers were as ranged from 1 to 100 there was an offset of 1 so to retrieve the marks for roll number you had to uh, use index roll number minus 1 okay. this was a point to note otherwise it's pretty intuitive now if you wanted to kind of modify that program and find um the student who got the highest marks okay so what we could do is keep track of the marks so far the highest marks so far what should this marks so far be initialized to so one uh, possibility is initialize it to the most negative possible the the the, the uh, smallest possible value that can be stored in a double right so let's say this is the most negative oof most negative double in c++ and then uh, as you proceed we process the elements of max of the marks right and therefore you will you will say marks so far oh sorry max so far will be the max of max so far and the marks at position i we will have to define a function max ah so since uh, i is a roll number um either you will Either it is to be a roll number or the roll number minus one. So let's say i is the uh, index into the array. We, we should initialize it with zero. Okay, and we have a very obvious definition of uh, max. Uh, max.
okay could you do better with the initialization do you really need to store the most negative double in c++ okay so you could well what how about the the first first element of the array okay so what we have done in this code here is max so far is initialized to marks at 0 and therefore the index can now begin from 1 and range until 99 okay so here index can be actually i because the max is already initialized to the uh, value at index 0 so this is correct is clear now you can only know the max after having read all the marks so therefore one scan was inevitable but suppose i ask you identify the student who received the maximum mark what would you do okay so one way is an additional iteration do one more iteration okay so what you have done here is uh, scan the array once more and check if marks i equals max so far and then printed i plus 1 as a roll a roll number that attained the maximum marks but some of you are staring at this this is not necessary what could you do instead ok so let us write the program a simplified program which combines the two you could just combine the two programs write down the new program neatly I am initializing max roll number also to 0 by default there is only one entry then the 0th entry is going to be the ma maximum marks and thereafter I start with 1 I go until 99 so I could just do the following max so far the max of max so far comma marks i if max so far is the same as the marks with rule number i plus 1 okay by the way max rule number should be 1 initialized to 1 because uh, roll numbers start from 1 to 100. So, if this is the case, then uh, max roll number equals i plus 1. Okay, so, I have a more compact program. Okay. Sorry. What if multiple people got highest marks? What would you do? How would you modify this program? So, what happens if you have multiple highest? One way is create max roll number as an array and I in the worst case you could have 100 of them getting the max marks I mean all of them right of course then I have to initialize all of them to position 1 so will more work we will have to keep track of multiple 
um, such highest indices. Max marks will be only one, the value will only be one, the indices could be multiple. Okay. More work. But there are other interesting data structures, there are structures such as sets. It is all built on arrays after all, but there you could uh, more seamlessly keep track of the, uh, the max scoring set of roll numbers. Seamless as far as the writing of the code is concerned, but as far as the execution is concerned, it will all boil down to hard work. All depends on who has to do the hard work, the right person writing the code or the compiler or the execution environment. Someone has to do the hard work. Let us look at another program. So, we want to read marks of students and let us say the marks could be between 1 to 10, 11 to 20 or 91 to 100. Actually, more generally, you could say that these are say um, close interval 1 to 11, 11 open interval, comma close interval 11 to open interval 21 and so on closed interval 91 to 100, 100 you will really like to keep it a close interval. Okay, then uh, what I am going to do is count the number of marks in each of these ranges so that I can create a histogram. A histogram basically will look like follows. So, you will have marks ranges, okay, say 1 to 11 open interval. Uh, actually, you could also have 0 here. And that will be a bar corresponding to it, the number of people who got marks in those in that range. Then 11 to 21 and so on. Typically, you would expect a distribution that looks like this, some slightly bell shaped. Okay, so in sorry, multiple people have. Uh, can we go back to that later on? Uh, okay, so uh, let's just complete this. Now, for each range, I am going to keep an index i. So, the indices will be say 0 for 1 to 11 or 1 to 10, 11 to 21 will be index 1 and so on and index 9 would correspond to 91 to 100. Okay. So, these are the indices into the hist array. So, hist i should store number of students getting marks between what? Can you fill up the blanks for me? So, given this picture, what should hist i contain? Which range? So, hist 0 contains 1 to 10 or you can think of it as open interval until 11. So, what should uh, hist i contain marks between? Yes, students behind should be, should be some function of i. We know that every index covers range of uh, interval of size 10 approx, right? So, this will be what? i into 10 plus 1 and i plus 1 into 10. Is this correct? You can verify for 0 it will be 1 to 10 and then 11 to 20 and so on. Okay. 
So, I mean 10.5 will actually go into the first bucket. Okay, so, this is, in the, this is a little rough here, it can be more precise, but this is uh, correct as far as what is printed on the slide is concerned. Okay, so now I want to complete the program, I have this. So now the next question is on reading a certain mark, let us say I read a mark from the user, I need to increment. Okay, so I will say some mark has been read C in mark and I want to say well hist of something equals hist of that same thing plus 1, let me call this index. Now what should be index as a function of mark? What should be that index? You can use the fact that i th, um, index should store marks between 10 i plus 1 until 10 into i uh, will uh, i plus 1 into 10. So now can you tell me how do I get the index? When, I, when we say element, suitable element, we mean suitable element with index, with the index entry. So what should that index be? Now you can uh, work it out backwards, so we know that 10 should map to index 0, 20 should map to index 1, okay. So this gives you some idea that index should be mark minus 1 divided by 10. Now the int part, so I, you have to define index to be int. Okay, let us start writing this program now. Okay, so while true, I am not bothering to initialize hist for saving space, but assume that hist is all set to 0. The way you would initialize hist to 0 is by iterating over the elements. Okay, so Okay, so I have initialized it here and now while the user keeps inputting some marks, now see in mark, I do not care for the roll number here, I just know that there is one mark to be put into some bucket. I will say int index equals mark minus 1 divided by 10. Now because it is an int, the uh, the truncation is very implicit. So if mark for example is 19.2, then you will get 18.2 divided by 10 okay uh, or uh, yeah 9.2. Actually, let me do 11.2. 11.2 11 will become 10.2 divided by 10, which is 1, index 1. So, you just need to do hist of index plus plus. Okay, so, now you can put some break conditions if you want. If you know that invalid marks would mean that you exit the loop like before, okay. So you are assuming that mark is an integer and truncation is division. So there are two ways to do it. 
if you assume mark is an integer like we have done here then you can just go ahead and use mark minus 1 10 mark minus 1 divided by 10 else you could also do the following you could also cast mark minus 1 divided by 10 into an int so this casting okay, we will see this today you could also do this assign it to an int in which the casting is implicit so here is uh, the code um, so we have initialized hist and then uh, we are reading the mark ok I have uh, I am declaring mark every time in the loop but you could also do this outside the loop I have not um, created a new variable index in the code here uh, in, on the slide so in, instead I have just used this int mark minus 1 and as I said earlier this int is nothing but casting is casting the value to an int ok so as mentioned here int function covers uh, converts into an int you can do it this way or you could uh, also do it this way you can cast it this way as well ok any questions It's a simple histogram program now let us say we have a different variation where um, I also read in roll numbers so roll numbers are not necessarily between 1 and 100 the roll numbers are also possibly arbitrary strings earlier what we assumed is we are reading marks and uh, they are in a default order from 1 to 100 but now let us say teacher enters 100 pairs ok so I am entering these marks uh, alongside roll numbers and these roll numbers are also ends and uh, you read them and program must print marks if r is a valid roll number so i have i read those marks and then um, i answer a query so i am query is marks for r i will input some value of r so what is the idea what will be the basic uh, foundation how do you store roll numbers now and into a separate array ok so you will have alongside marks an array of roll numbers and uh, so let us say I have I have an assumption that there are 100 so int roll number 100 um, the second one is double, marks will be double. Okay, so I'll I'll store the value of roll number with the associated marks. Okay, examine each element of the array and see if it equals R if so print corresponding marks to the marks array so I will be storing I will be reading initially um, C in roll number I and also input the marks I 
Okay, so, like before, I'll be reading these two. So, having read them, um, having read them, when I am asked, okay, some problem here. Yeah, when I am asked to print the marks for R, all I need to do is, what will I do? I will say that if roll number i equal to equal to r, then print marks i. That is a basic idea. So, now I have to do a lookup into the roll number array as well as a lookup into the marks array using the same i. i is common to both. Earlier I was looking up the marks array using roll number, but now they are two different arrays, but with the same index i. Okay, so here is the final program. You first read, read the pairs of roll number and marks. And thereafter, for a query roll number, this R is a query, a query coming from probably one of the students here. And what you do is, uh, you just look up the indices. Okay. I uh, have also ex special exit conditions here, which is uh, if the map, if the roll number i equals r break. If you didn't find the roll number in your marks list, then you don't return anything. <coughs> okay. Now we look at another uh, variant and another problem, a different type of problem. So far, we have been looking at variants of the roll number marks problem. So, we are moving on to another type of problem. Any questions so far? So, let us look at polynomial multiplication. And I think you have read in polynomials and done some processing with polynomials in one of your earlier lab assignments. But now, we have two polynomials to deal with and we will be looking at how to multiply them. Okay. So, the idea here is um, when you multiply two polynomials a and b, the coefficients for the resultant polynomial can come from the coefficients of the two polynomials we multiplied, but in multiple ways you could combine them. Right. So, uh, let us take a simple example. So, if you have x plus 2x square or 1 plus x plus 2x square plus 3x cube and 4 plus 2x plus x square minus 4x cube. Okay, and let us say this is your a, ax, this is your bx, this is your a0 a1 is 1, a2, a3 and here you have b0, b1, b2 and b3, b3 is minus 4 and let us say I am looking at cx, but I will focus on one particular coefficient looking at say x, x square coefficients of x square. How, how do you get these coefficients? 1 into 1 that is a 0 into b 2 plus a 1 into 
a1 into b1 that will also give you x square right plus a2 into b0 okay, you can verify this is 1 plus 2 plus 8 this is 11, 11 x square. Now I want to generalize this. So tell me what will be the basic algorithm idea, everyone. You have seen an example, the problem is on the board. You tell me what the general idea of this algorithm will be. Yeah. There are multiple ways you can express this algorithm idea. First of all, um, you know that C has m plus n plus 1 coefficients, A has n plus 1 and B has m plus 1 coefficients. Okay, so, if we were to, if I were to um, initialize, I would say uh, not initialize, declare, I will declare it as follows, double a n plus 1 b m plus 1 c n plus m plus 1. Okay, I will take the n and m from as input from the user. And the basic idea of the algorithm will be to express uh, C2, which is C2 can be obtained as 2 plus 0 or 1 plus 1 or 0 plus 2, right. So, multiple ways you can write the algorithm idea. One way is to write it as follows Cn. equals summation i equals 0 to n of a i into b n minus i is correct. One way to write this, but this is not uh, I mean this is not necessarily going to give me a very good way of expressing the C. I mean I will have to kind of iterate over all values of n and get this C. Some I will need to keep a accumulator for every C n. You could do this, you will have to keep an accumulator for every C n. Is there any other way I can do this? Okay, so uh, uh, I am wrong in saying that this is not good, but is there any other way to express this? This is one way. Shall I take back my words? This is just one way. Probably a good way. Is there another way? Because some of you have attempted it slightly differently. <clears throat> Can I directly write an accumulator expression like this? C i plus j equals c of i plus j the old value plus a i into b j. So, either of these. So, c i plus j which is say c 2 can be obtained as uh, so, C2 is initially A0 into B2 plus 0 and then to that I add A1 into B1 and to that I add A2 into B0. So, I can basically accumulate using this expression, directly accumulate using the expression. Okay. So, this is also one way of developing the algorithm, the, the code. So, each term Ai x raised to i in Ax will multiply each term Bj x raised to j and the product will contribute to C i plus j x raised to i plus j. 
So let's write the code. This should be very simple now. You have all the elements. What will be my first step? I need to ensure that C is R. What should be the values of C? Every every element should be zero. Okay, so everyone should be writing. I, please complete the code. Uh, first of all, I will know this from i is zero to n plus n, hmm. and then for every element i, I will know from zero to i. Let c i s c i plus a j times. Oh, so you are going to uh, j less than i. Why do you need to do this? You might miss out some terms. This for uh, accumulating into c i. But you are ensuring you are somehow forcing j to be less than i plus one. So you are only looking at lower lower indices in a with higher indices in b. But why not a of b i minus j into b of j? No, I'm, I'm talking about this. Yeah. So, what about how about where will this term come? P of j into a i minus j. That's also a valid term. That should also add up to c i, right? J times b times b j into a i minus j. Where 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 will this term contribute? Is it part of your scheme? I think it will be missed out. We can take it offline here. Yeah. Okay, so let's complete the, the code. The first thing to do will be to initialize for int k equal zero, k less than n plus n plus one, k plus plus c n plus m plus oh sorry. CK is zero. That's fine. For so convenience, I'll just drop the braces. And then I need to build on the algorithm idea. This is the initialization. So I need to write the loops so that For i, blah blah blah. For j, blah blah blah. C i plus j equals C i plus j plus a i into b j. Now make sure that both i and j range over all the values of all the coefficients in a and all the coefficients in b. So as you complete, uh, I'll just again illustrate on this degree t, degree two polynomial, two x square plus x plus three into four x square plus five x plus six. So your coefficients are two, one, three, four, five, six. Think of these as the elements of A. These are the elements of B. Okay, and uh, the algorithm will be basically this: initialize all elements in array C to zero. Of course, after reading the two polynomials, and the idea algorithm idea will be implemented as follows: multiply A i with B j to store in C i plus j, and this you have to do. So, what should you do here? For each i. Corresponding to the value up to the max degree of a. Here, for each i, the max degree of a. For each j, which is less than equal to the max degree of b, which is of, of course n and m, right? So now we should be able to complete the code. You have read in the polynomials a and b, and you have initialized c. Now multiply. Orient i equal zero, i less than n plus one, i plus plus, 
फॉर इंड जे इक्वल जीरो जे लेस देन एम प्लस वन जे प्लस प्लस सी आई प्लस जे इक्वल सी आई प्लस जे This should be the complete code. This is what I was trying to write here. Any questions? Pardon? What it is better? W better or worse than what? Uh, when you uh, is it better or worse than uh, expressing C n? I think it should be the same. So you will have to iterate over all values of n. Here a n minus one here. Uh, a i, a i i equals zero to n. That's fine, right? Oh, your okay. Your concern is uh, what if a and uh, b don't have the same number of coefficients? Okay, but you can keep track of that. The second one is I would say uh, it's it's much. a uh, smooth to kind of execute what the, what the advantage is second one is you can let these n and m be whatever they want whatever they need to be whereas in the first case you'll have to be a little careful because i have said cn what uh, what is what, the, what is the range of i index into a and index into b n minus i right so that you need to be a bit careful so yes i can say that this is a bit tricky but let's go back to what we have developed um yeah this specific program has uh, 10 degree degree 10 for both a and b and c therefore has degree 20 so those uh, the n and m have been set to 10 and 10 respectively okay and, and the other difference is i'm letting a, i equal 10 or j equal 10 k equal 20 um whereas uh, here it was a strictly less than sign so that's perf that's all okay okay any questions can we move on so now we look at a slightly different application of arrays um we look at a problem of booking taxis okay so how many of you here have used no, not used ola or uber anyone so most of you have experience right and this is a very familiar site as you are trying to book you can see a bunch of taxis queued up okay so these are taxis waiting in some virtual queue so I, the kali bili taxis the older taxis they would actually be in a physical queue now there is a virtual queue right the, it, it's a computer programs queue and uh, the queue is basically scattered here and there but the indices are very systematically arranged so uh, the moment you book a taxi what happens the next person after you what will that person see she or he the uh, one taxi will be missing right okay so if a customer arrives if taxi is waiting first driver and queue is assigned so let's say this was for some reason the first driver in queue this this first driver is assigned and therefore the queue shrinks by 1 and so shrunk new queue 
Okay, this is what we want to know. Manage through arrays. How do you do that? So we'll have to do the following. We'll have to keep track of arrivals of taxis and customers through the use of some special keyword. So we'll use um, D for a driver, C for a customer and X when we feel that it's time to exit. Enough of booking taxis. Right? So, so we'll have D for a driver, C for a customer and X for an exit. And as, uh, let's say we have a driver D that comes, the driver would come with an associated ID. Okay, so driver would have an ID 501, another driver 206, another driver 110 and at some point there is a customer, three taxis queued up as we saw in the app, a customer comes C with some, uh, the customer could also have an ID, let's, uh, we'll try and be, try and be uniform. C112, that's the customer ID. Now, which taxi will the customer be assigned? So, when a customer arrives, you assign the earliest driver. What was the earliest driver here? 501. Okay, so, so this is uh, the ID of first in, first out. The driver to come first is the driver that goes out first, right? So, this is in contrast to what we sh showed with say functions uh, spaces, right? Or uh, piles of papers. The paper that sits at the top is the one that, that gets out first. That is the last in first out. So, this is first in first out and then when a new driver again comes, it can be a new driver after this, so D217. Now, this driver, where will it go? It will go at the bottom. So, this is indeed a queue. You pick drivers from the front and push drivers at the back. Okay, now we, we, it's important to note that once 501 is assigned, when D217 comes, there is no longer any D501, that's already gone, that's assigned, okay. So, you have to assign the earliest driver and also remove the driver of assigned driver, remove the driver ID of the assigned driver from memory, right. And when a new driver comes, you add that driver's ID to the memory, that's what we saw here. Okay, so you have to remember the order of the arrival, so that you have the first in first out uh, contract, that is a kind of contract with the, the taxi management program. Okay, so let us uh, get into more details, we will use an array and assume that there are at most 500 drivers that we would queue up. Okay. It's, it's, and for especially for today's class, it will really help if we are writing comments all the time, as you see now, right? Um, and we did, we did the same for polynomial multiplication. We benefited from the use of comments. Write the comments first and then write the code. Okay, so now we have a driver uh, ID array of size n. Now, in what order to store the IDs in the array? What do you store first? What will be the order? The arrival order. What other information do we need to remember? What are the other pieces of information? 
the number of drivers in the queue right so what do we need to remember well we'll have something called int n drivers um we'll also have we'll also need to know what is the first driver in the queue in the array right so where is the first driver in the queue can we assume that driver id 0 is the first driver in the queue we can do that to begin with but in general we need information on position of first driver what do we do when the customer arrives you will assign to the customer c112 you will assign the driver in the first position and remove that driver right so when the customer arrives you will assign say driver id 0 remove that driver and when a new driver ar ar arrives push the driver to the end ok so with all this information I want you to write the simple uh, try and attempt a simple program everyone ok I am giving you are uh, these hints now you try and write a program that achieves this effect what does assigning a driver from the front mean what does it mean to remove the driver ok so uh, there is a comment here why should we assign the first driver in the queue why should we not assign the nearest driver that is your most sophisticated OLA program we are now assuming that you have gone to a, your railway station there is a physical queue of drivers and you get the first driver from the queue right so we are not very sophisticated right now but yes that will be interesting to do we will do that later I mean you will do that later so while we are on that uh, interesting comment what we are dealing with here is a kind of queue what he talked about is something called priority queue your, your the prioritization of elements mean may be based on some distance or rates for that matter you could also see you could also sort by the cheapest driver okay. but we are looking at very simple temporally ordered that is a default here not ordered based on price not ordered based on proximity yeah Suppose you have 10 IDs, 10 IDs, 10 IDs. So the second ID will become the first ID. Okay. So there is a proposal that uh, remove can be done by shifting the entire array to the top. Okay. So we will get now to the details. ok so the idea one this is our first idea which is store earliest driver and driver id 0 next earliest in driver id 1 remember the number of drivers waiting as int n waiting ok so you have int n waiting as a number of drivers ok so uh, initially you have the uh, this driver arrival schedule but the customer arri arrival kind of is interleaved here so a arrives right after the the third uh, the, the the driver id 3 that arrives and uh, i need to be able to manage this okay so here's our high level program which we'll now try and detail okay so if command equals d then process the driver arrival 
else if command equals c process the customer arrival i won't bother to reproduce all of that on the board let's try and write each of these so if command equals d okay let's process the driver arrival here on this side we'll try and process the customer arrival okay uh, if the command is x then break that means no more of scheduling so what would you do with the assumption that driver id at point z at zero is the default driver so driver arrival when you have what should i do where should i add that so i'll say c in i'll read in the say driver id d okay. int d c in d and then where should i uh, add this driver id driver id and waiting equals d and then i'll increase the value of n waiting n waiting plus plus customer arrival how do i process okay so we need to keep track of some invariants here so number of waiting drivers can be at most the array length n waiting cannot exceed n and i have kind of blindly said n waiting plus plus what if even on the left hand side if i already have n drivers waiting i can't add an n plus 1th driver okay so idea of earliest waiting driver is in driver id 0 that much i know and therefore n waiting cannot exceed n in the scheme n waiting equals equals n minus 1 is that fine you exceeded capacity something like that okay so sh should it be n minus 1 this so we have not taken care of that Okay, so we will have to add that. Okay, we have it in the next slide. We will we'll have to refine that first condition itself. Okay, so a next driver is in driver id 1, then the driver id n mating minus 1. Okay, so it is not, uh, I mean, I can add to n waiting only if n waiting does not exceed n minus 1. Okay, so this is my more complete thing. If n waiting equals equals n, the queue is full. Otherwise, you add it in the uh, n waiting position and increase the n waiting by 1. Okay, so coming back here, uh, should be n waiting equals n. Okay, so this with this we are done with the first part. Okay, we just need to take care of this. If n waiting is equals n, then q is full. Else, that's the part we were looking at. 
in D. Now you help me complete the other part. C and D. So this is the else part. Okay, now what do I do with the customer arrival? So if the if the number of waiting is greater than zero, because if there is no waiting, then there is no point processing the customer. If it's greater than zero, then assign the earliest unassigned driver to customer. And where is the earliest unassigned customer stored in? A driver stored in. We know this is in driver ID. Zero. Okay, that's by design for this particular case, uh, option one. The student driver ID zero, and then now how do I complete this code? So I have to finish this part, right? Uh, so I'll say C out assign driver ID zero. But this is only if n waiting is greater than zero. Else you'll just say nothing to do, right? Now what do I do? I need to delete n waiting zero. Unassign unwaiting zero. Somebody suggested that one way of deleting this is pushing everything up. Okay, so what we will do in our first option is push up for deletion. Which means that driver id 0 will be assigned the previous driver id 1 in general what we will do in general the second earliest should become the new earliest third earliest should become the second earliest and so on so what we are saying is driver id i uh, should be assigned the value of driver id i plus 1 okay that's what it means to push and and n waiting should decrease okay so let's do this let's complete this code for int i equals 1, i less than n waiting i plus plus, just confirm that this is correct, driver id i minus 1, I am writing driver id minus 1, you could also write as, uh, you start with i equals 0 also, equals driver id i. And then n waiting minus minus. I hope this is correct. Because Q shifts up and uh, n waiting minus minus. So this this is what I was referring to here as warrant i equals one i less than n waiting. I plus plus driver ID I minus one is driver ID I. Pardon? But n waiting is greater than uh, yeah for if there is only one driver. So it should be less than or equal to. Yes. Less than or equal to. Okay. Um, okay. So the the code has a. If there's only one driver, 
actually that's not a problem so you, it should be less than if there's only one driver what will happen is you assign that and there's nothing to shift up number of waiting will become zero so this is okay actually this was right this should be e less than pardon no i'm saying if there's only one driver you assign it and then n waiting becomes zero so that uh, driver id zero is anyways meaningless so that uh, we should not adjust our code for this corner case so i made the mistake okay so you should not repeat this mistake okay so this is correct so i less than equal to n waiting minus 1 or i less than n waiting okay so uh, otherwise this is fine now my point is this is a very stupid way of doing the assignment why should i be doing the shifting up all the way every time i have a driver assigned i'm going to shift this whole thing then 206 shift up the whole thing is that how i do it on the board what did i do on the board i said well this is crossed and uh, what i kind of did virtually is by crossing i said that i'm moving my front pointer so i have a front this was my front i moved the front here when this 206 gets assigned i'll move my front down okay so what happens on blackboard is more efficient than what our stupid computer program did for a change now you writing on paper that's why it's very important write things on paper you realize the stupidity of writing dumb programs so you emulate what might happen without computers drivers are written top to bottom when bo uh, when the board of the bottom is reached begin from the top if drivers have left at all points you are maintaining a front pointer you maintain a front pointer and update the front pointer okay so i'm going to show this uh, show this uh, through some little animation so so do you have the driver queue to begin with and then 657 is the first element here which gets uh, which is the front 205 is the last and now let's say a couple of them get assigned because customers came in so the ones in pink are the ones that get assigned the front moves down to 103 you are not deleting anything you are not moving things up you just moving the front pointer and now yeah the the, the, the one first four get assigned to a to some customers they are assigned and then let's say i add one more 546 but that 546 uh, cannot be added at the bottom it has to be added where there is space and where is the space it's the space is at the top i hope you understand this so the last has been moved to the top and then you can add few more you can keep adding to the at the uh, till the last just becomes one position away from front if it's in the if it's wrapping around okay so i have a couple of questions so how do i modify these programs does this program change does this program change do both programs change and uh, how do i effectively achieve this wrap around so let's try and attempt this so drivers if n waiting equals n number of waiting is n number of waiting i'll preserve but i'll need some more variable the front right so let me add this in front is initialized to zero but the front need not be always zero assume that front is initialized to zero if n n waiting equals n what should i do sorry n n waiting is less than n what should i do should i just return the value of driver id n waiting was it n waiting or n waiting minus 1 n waiting minus 1 sorry this was n waiting minus 1 uh, no no wait wait this this is n waiting only 
this is a new, uh, yeah, this is invading, this was correct, this is when a driver comes, I forgot, this is when the customer comes, so when a new driver comes, will it be just this or something different? Okay, so what is the way of achieving this wrap around? If I am at the top, bottom, I need to go back to the top, what would I do? Okay, if I am at the bottom, I need to go to the top, what would I do? So first of all, the indices have to be between 0 and n minus 1. Now, I am kind of revisiting a very nice operator we have been using so often in GCD the mod operator ok so if I have if I do k mod n then k mod n what will be the value it returns it will return a value between 0 and n minus 1 so no matter where I am if I do a mod n I should be able to get a value between 0 and n minus 1 but that does not necessarily mean is the right value Right, but it turns out that the mod is what will help you do the wrap around. So now tell me how I can change here. Can I put a mod here? N waiting mod n. Can I do something similar here? Yes. Please suggest a modification to the program. So you have the program here. I have given you the log the basic clue. Tell me what the revised program will look like. And I, my hint is, it's just changing one or two places. You have to keep track of front, so front has to be updated. Moment a driver uh, is assigned, n waiting increases. Sorry, moment a driver is added, n waiting increases. Moment a customer comes and a driver is assigned, the front will move below. The front will get updated. That's what we were doing here. Front got updated on here. The example of the board. N waiting, N waiting, N rate, N waiting plus front mod N. That's what some are suggesting. What here, here, N waiting plus front mod N. Okay, so let's. Uh, so think of driver ID as a circular array. The next position after N minus one is zero. Right, and therefore you can think of this as n minus one plus one mod n. That's a hint. I mean, okay. So new variable front, which is the position at earlier arriving driver, front is initialized to zero, and valid dri valid driver IDs are at positions. What are the positions? front until front plus n waiting front plus n waiting minus 1 that is the valid positions we have but what we will do is introduces mod n which will help you wrap around so valid IDs are from front to front plus n waiting minus 1 mod n. So mod provides this wrapping around effect. So I have given an example here driver ID 4 in the, in the table driver ID 4 to driver ID 4 plus 12 minus 1 mod 13 because there were 13 entries that becomes driver ID 4 to driver ID 2. So you can do this wrap around. Okay, so in general, last position you don't have to explicitly store. Last is always derivable as n waiting plus front minus one mod n. This thirteen is nothing. Thirteen, thirteen is nothing but mod n. Okay, so here is our modified program. I mean, now you can see it quickly. Uh, the driver arrival. All that will change here is instead of n waiting. You have n waiting plus front mod n. Okay, that's one change.
that one changes and the second of customer arrival what you do is um, you have to change your front bus moment the bus, uh, a driver gets assigned so you don't have to you don't have to go through this loop you will you will just have a simple front equals front plus 1 but again mod n because the front might have to go back to the the front of the queue and instead of assigning driver id 0 i will assign driver id front that's it pardon uh, n waiting is anyways updated here so i am just showing what changes this part of the code changes so this is changing this part changed the for loop vanished and here your index for update that vanished uh, that changed so you see only three changes but it's pretty elegant we have gotten rid of the unnecessary pushing up piece of code this clear Okay, so new idea is better, copying of elements of driver ID is avoided and all this is with some efficiency gain, fixed number of operations. The in invariant was supposed to be that, n waiting is number of waiting guys, that's, that should remain in, uh, true even after each customer or driver arrival. I just going to take uh, a couple minutes more. So there is an entire section on use of arrays for representing character sequences we will not talk about it now we will talk about it later and when we deal with strings ok so uh, I mean this is not really required as far as the course is uh, I mean the current material for mid is concerned we will not deal with character arrays uh, that will be excluded from syllabus you need to be a little familiar with two dimensional arrays for the lab starting today just introduction to two dimensional arrays so two dimensional arrays are nothing but multiple one dimensional arrays stacked on top of each other okay so you'll have rows 1 uh, sorry 0 to m minus 1 and columns 0 to n minus 1 and you can create m into n variables in one shot in one go by just saying double xyz mn so think of these as major dimensions and minor dimensions you can also initialize these as follows you could initialize pqr as a as an array with two rows and three columns right and this is a pretty intuitive 157 1362 so enhanced versions of two dimensional arrays we will discuss later on but that will involve pointers this is a very simple invocation of two dimensional arrays and uh, here is a very simple example where you can create an identity matrix a 10 by 10 identity matrix which has ones along the diagonal elements and zeros along the off diagonal elements. So you get the ones along the diagonal elements by using uh, aij equals 1 if and only if i equals j. Okay. So this is a very simple extension of the two dimensional arrays. Uh, you can also read multiple marks for a single student that is what we have done here create an array m to store marks of 10 students in 5 tests so this is student 1 with 5 marks student 2 with 5 marks and so on and typically you have say 5 courses in a semester so you can read these into 2 dimensional arrays so a lot of matrix processing requires these 2 dimensional arrays otherwise they behave very much like 1 dimensional arrays in fact at the heart of it it is all 1 dimensional arrays only 
okay so in the uh, post bit sim we will begin with use of recursions and arrays that's a very interesting topic we put together our basic array tools and the recursion methodology and that will give us a lot more to explore we'll have the quiz now 